A great life is something that is inspiring, that has meaning, that's purposeful, that is prioritized. You've probably heard me say this in every seminar that I've ever presented or any workshop or any speech or webinar about values. Every human being lives by a set of priorities, a set of values at any moment, whatever it is in their life. And that hierarchy of values, that set or priority set that they have, if they set a goal um, and it is in congruent and aligned with whatever's highest on your value, whatever is the highest one, you spontaneously are inspired from within to do it. And if you're doing that, nobody has to remind you to do it. It's like a young boy who loves his video games. He doesn't need to be motivated to do his game. He does it spontaneously. I'm a spontaneous guy when it comes to research, writing, and teaching. I mean, if I'm not teaching, I'm researching and writing. <laughs> I don't have to be, you know, I don't have to get up morning and somebody get up and say, John, you need to go up and do a talk today. That, 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 you, you won't ever find anybody having to motivate me to do that. You may have to motivate me to do something else. You know, maybe I, somebody would have to really motivate me to drive a car. <laughs> that's something I don't do. I haven't done that in three decades. But but the thing that's truly deeply meaningful, the, th the thing that's absolutely inspiring that you can't wait to get up in the morning and do, if you fill your day with that and fill your day with the highest priority, highest value, most meaningful, most inspiring, most fulfilling action, that's the most powerful thing you can do as a self-actualizing individual. That's that's Maslow's self-actualization path. Now, you have probably in a day, depending on how you structure your life, other actions that may need to be done at first, you think. But the more you can delegate lower priority things and get everybody else to do that and get on to the one thing, as Gary Keller says, the one thing that you most love doing, you're free and you won't have to be motivated. You know, I, I, when I sat with a, had dinner with a gentleman, named Bill Pollack, who owned Drake International Company, big company. It's, uh, God, it's huge. He's a very wealthy billionaire that basically has this huge company that serves massive numbers of companies around the world. And we were having dinner and he said, in 1951, I started my business. It was a temporary service business in Toronto at the time, Canada. And now it's massive. He says, that was the last day I worked. Now the guy did 18 hour days, but he doesn't work. And you know, it's interesting. I, I do 18 hour days. That's a typical day for me. And it's, I would say part-time if it's under 15. And what's interesting is my blood pressure is 96 over 56 on average. Uh, my cardiovascular system is, I have a heart rate that's really low. People go, you don't, you, you don't have a, there's not a, you're not stressed. What distress is, is when you're doing something you feel you have to do, that's a duty. When you're doing something you have to do, got to do, must do, should, ought to, supposed to do, need to do, you're going to build distress. When you're doing something you desire to do, choose to do, and love to do, you're going to build you stress. And if you're not doing the highest priorities, you're going to end up with distress. So you want to surround yourself with people to do the things that are lower in priority so you can stick to the thing, the one thing that you're most inspired to do. You know, Warren Buffett sits there and does reads financial statements and makes decisions on investments and loves to meditate and read during the day. That's his life. And he does the interviews occasionally. But what happens is most people, they were they running a business or they're doing a job or whatever, and they're having a whole lot of stuff that is not inspiring. In the breakthrough experience, one of the, the keys in there, there's two ways of either go do what you love through delegating or love what you do through linking. So in that program, I teach you how to do those two things. That's basically taking command of your motors, prioritizing your motor actions or prioritizing your sensory perceptions. And that, that, that's a goal mine. If you know how to do that, then no matter what's happening, it's always on the way, not in the way. And you're in the flow instead of on the, on the frustrations. And so you don't want to do low party things. As soon as you can possibly do it, delegate. And people say, well, that's fine for you. You know, you have plenty of money and everything else. And that's why you do it. No, I learned delegation at 27. And when I learned to delegate, that's when I made the money. When I was trying to make, when I, when I was not delegating, I didn't make as much because I was doing low priority things. I was draining myself. I was frustrated. I was putting fires out and doing something that's not really when intrinsically a yearning to do. And I was needing motivation. I was procrastinating, hesitating. And that's why you want to set goals that are real objectives that are high on your values. They're not fantasies because otherwise you're going to weigh yourself down and slow down the process.
and hesitate, procrastinate. And then because you're not doing something meaningful, you're going to go for immediate gratification and you're going to probably going to drink more. You're going to go party more or whatever. All those are symptoms, believe it or not. People think that's the good life. That's not the good life. The great life, as, as, as Colin says, good to great. The moral idea that that's a pleasure center and that's good and the bad is pain or whatever is not the same as a great life. A great life is something that is inspiring, that has meaning, that's purposeful, that is prioritized. But I learned to prioritize my life, to write down everything I did that was most important and get to the highest priority things and delegate the rest away. So I'm pretty well useless in the lower priority things, but I'm committed to the teaching, researching and writing. That's it. And traveling. Well, anytime you meet, let's say you walk in a mall and you meet somebody and you go, you know, wow, they seem to be more intelligent than me, more knowledgeable, more educated or something. Or you go and they seem more successful than me or they feel like they have more wealth than me or they have a more stable relationship to me or they may have uh, more social connections than me or more physically fit to me or more spiritually aware or something. Anytime you, you look at somebody and you admire them and look up to them, put them on a pedestal, you'll tend to minimize yourself. And because goals in society go from those who have the most power to those that have the least power, those who live by design to those who live by duty, ontological to deontological, anytime you put somebody above you, you just increase the probability of injecting some of their values into your life to cloud the clarity of what your highest value is, your mission. Your mission is always an expression of your highest value. Your purpose is an expression of what you value most. It's what you most deeply meaningful. In fact, the very highest value Aristotle called the telos, and the study of that was called teleology, and teleology was a study of meaning and purpose. So when you're looking for what is the most meaningful thing, the most purposeful thing, the most fulfilling thing, the most inspiring thing, it is, I guarantee you, an expression of what you value most. And if you haven't gone on my website and done the Dr. Demartini value determination process, please take advantage of that free and private complimentary system there. It takes 30 minutes of your time. And just go and answer the questions and do do it again and again and again, because you may have lied to yourself the first time and do it again until you really get a clear tear in your eye and go, bang, that's what I'm up to. That's what I'm committed to. My life demonstrates it. If your life is not demonstrating actions consistently towards what you say is important, what you say is important, isn't important. And you can't lie to yourself about that. My, my life demonstrates I'm committed to research, writing, traveling and teaching. My life demonstrates it every day. You don't need to motivate me there. Motivation is a symptom, never a solution for mastery. It's a symptom that you haven't been engaged in what's meaningful. Because when you're engaged in something meaningful, you do it. So automatically, by prioritizing your life, you wake that up. And by making sure that you, you focus on that. Now, if you sit down and subordinate to some authority out there and inject their values in your life, you're going to cloud all that clarity of your mission. But it, what's happening is people... When they do, the, the cloudiness makes you uncertain, makes you unfulfilled, and going to the amygdala, and then you get even more uncertain because they set up fantasies that you self-defeat on. And then you start thinking, well, mm, I don't know what to do. And then you give your power away further. And the fastest way to disempower people is to sell them a fantasy, the opium of the masses. If you sell a people an extrinsic value, an opium of the masses, a pleasure without a pain, an ease without a difficulty, a support without a challenge, a nice without a mean, a peace without a war, Anytime you promote a fantasy like that and you go and try to go get a one-sided world with an extrinsic motor, motivator, you're going to undermine your, your primary objective and your highest value, an intrinsic drive. And that erodes your potential in life. Say no to fantasies and say yes to objectives. And don't let outer authorities. In the breakthrough experience, we take people that have these people that they admire, right? They may be a guru or maybe a somebody. I mean, it could be anybody a great business leader, whatever. The fastest way to transcend that injected value problem is to sit down and write down what specific trait, action, or inaction do you perceive this individual displaying or demonstrating that you admire most? And then make sure it's a real action or inaction. So it's something that's tangible, not a vague label that you put on them. Amazing, doesn't tell you anything, but that they have disciplined, uh, prioritized action, that's an action. But find it and then go inside yourself and ask yourself, all right, John, go to a moment where and when you perceive yourself displaying or demonstrating the same or specific, same or, or similar specific trade action, inaction inside yourself and go and own it and go find out where you have it and do it again and 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 again, and again, and again 30, 40, 50 times until you're absolutely certain 
whatever I see in them is inside me. So I don't have to be them. I already have that behavior in me, in my value system, not theirs. Because if I try to envy them and try to imitate them, it's going to be suicide for me. Because I'm going to be a cat trying to swim like a fish instead of me being me. I don't want to be second to being somebody else. I want to be first at being me. When I got asked many years ago by Vogue magazine in an interview, you know, who would you like to be if you could be anybody in the world? I said, me. I have no desire to be anybody else. Why would I want to be somebody else and be second when I could be me and be first? So if you subordinate to outer authorities, you're going to undermine your, your potential. Albert Einstein said that one of his great quotes, you know, uh, my, my resistance to authority is what made me one. He had Philip Leonard, one of his teachers there, and he challenged him. And he was a Nobel Prize winner, Philip Leonard. And he challenged him on a, a photoelectric effect uh, idea. And Philip Leonard was upset with him because Einstein was 18, 19 years old. But it turned out that Einstein was accurate. But Philip Leonard didn't want to lose his power. So he tried to destroy Einstein, tried to get him assassinated even. He worked with Hitler to try to assassinate him. And what's interesting, Einstein said that if, if somehow God doesn't discover and doesn't have the laws of the universe according to what I have found, I feel sorry for God. That's how certain he was about it. But people who are pursuing challenges that inspire them, that are really aligned with their own highest values, they are the ones that have the innovative, creative genius that creates original ideas with unborrowed visions that impact the world. That's why it's so important to identify what's highest on your path. That's why I, I have that in the breakthrough experience. I want to make sure you dissolve the distractions in the breakthrough experience. And I want you to make sure you own the traits of the greats. So you're not subordinating to anybody. You're giving yourself permission to, to stand on the shoulders of giants, not in the shadows of anyone. So, yeah, that's the number one thing that, that causes confusion in most people and causes eventually what they call brain offload. You're so afraid to make decisions because you're in your amygdala. You can't see strategies. When you're in your executive center, you can see the thing and you can see the strategy. When you're in your... I mean, in your executive center, you can do that. When you're in a amygdala, you can't see it. There's no visual connection. And therefore, you hesitate, procrastinate, and then you give power and authority to the herd. You become part of the sheep instead of become the shepherd. And that's not where the power is. And that's where in any area of your life, you don't empower people, you're going to overpower you. You're going to play second instead of being first at what you are. I, I, authenticity is still the most magnificent thing you could be doing. And your body and physiology, psychology, sociology, everything that goes on in your life is going to try to get you there to set real goals in real times with real objectives that are deeply meaningful, that are really aligned with what you value most, that you can see in your mind's eye. Those are the vision flourish. Those without a vision perish. That is automatically making a difference substantially to the world in a fair exchange manner, because that's where you're most objective. When you're in your polarized amygdala, you tend to go into pride. And then you talk down to people and you get humbled and then you feel bad. And then you talk up to people and, and you're distracted. You want to be able to be stable in your true self-worth instead of vacillating in your oscillating self-esteem fluctuations. And that comes from living by highest priority, delegating the rest and getting clear on your mission. That's why I want people to do the breakthrough experience. That's the object, one of the objectives of the program. The quality of your life space and the quality of the questions you ask. And the questions you ask are taking unconscious information and make unconscious. So let's just take a pl play on that. If you're in, in a fantasy and you're conscious of the upsides and unconscious of the downsides, in order to get to an objective, you need the downsides to get the objective, to get meaning. The mean is the mean between the pair of opposites. In Aristotle's description of the mean, he talked about um, the two vices were the excess and deficiencies of the positives or negatives, and the virtue is the center, the the middle ground, like the Buddhist path. So if you're infatuated with something, you need the downsides. If you're resentful to something, you need the upsides. If you're proud, you need the downsides. That's why nature humbles it. And if you're shamed, you need the upsides. That's why people lift people that are down. And so nature's trying to get to the center. So if you're asking questions for strategic planning, you're looking for questions to balance out whatever you're pursuing, to make sure it's a true objective, because objectivity means neutral and balanced. So that's the first step is to ask yourself, what is it you'd really love to do? And do I see the pros and cons of it? And I, I, I think the Stoics had a great idea of meditating on the evils, as they say, asking yourself, what obstacles might I run into and how do I solve them in advance? So I, I want to go to Mars. Great. Elon Musk says, I want to go to Mars. Great. What obstacles might I run into and how do I solve them in advance? 
Okay, well, I'm a fuel issue. Okay, how do we solve that? Uh, radiation issue. Good. How do we solve that? Um, gravitational mastery, uh, landing. How do we solve that? I mean, he took us something that NASA had never accomplished. He figured out a way of, of having a spacecraft come back and be reusable and land again. That was one of the most amazing things to watch the first time. So he was solving problems. And people, you know, with the positive thinking fantasy world, they want to get, oh, don't give me the negatives. Only think of the positives. That's not going to get you very far in life. That's going to set you up for dis disaster. You need both sides. I, I learned that when I was 30 about it, how ridiculous it is to try to get a one-sided world out of life. You won't even be able to do it. If I said to you, you're always positive, never negative, you'd go, no, nope, that's not true. Or always negative, never positive. Nope, that's not true. You have both sides. And life has both sides and goals have that side. So ask yourself, what is it I would absolutely love to do in life? How do I get handsomely paid to do it so your vocation and vacation could be the same? What are the highest priority actions I can take today to move me one step closer towards that achievement? What obstacles might I run into and how do I solve them in advance? What worked and what didn't work today so you can efficiently and effectively refine what you're doing daily towards that objective? Uh, and also, how can I do it more effectively and efficiently? And then you want to ask this next question, how did, no matter what happened today, no matter what it is, how did it still get me towards a step closer to my goal? Because it's all perception. It's not what happens to you out there. It's your perception of what happens. If you can do that, it's impossible if you're not to get the goal, if you just follow those steps. But if you do that and you chunk it down to small steps, and if you don't have the knowledge to get the answer, then go get expertise, go get mentorship, a coaching system, come to the break, you ask me, whatever it is. If I don't know, I'll find somebody too. We will work towards that objective. Something, I always say when the why is big enough, the house take care of themselves. You've got a big enough reason for doing something, you will get the answers. You will find the people, you'll synchronize it. The people, places, things, ideas, and events tend to synchronize in your life when you're really clear on an objective. And if you've got a big enough reason for doing it. I had a lady in Los Angeles who just came from the break to expand. She just finished the break to expand. It's Sunday night. We're just finishing up. And she said, oh, Dr. DeMarty, I have one more question for you. I said, what's that? She said, uh, I got I got this one thing about my practice. I forgot to, my business. I mean, uh, I'm, I've been three years. I've been plateaued. I haven't really grown. And I'm a little frustrated by it because I was expecting to grow and I'm not growing. I said, uh, so what advice can you give me? I said, well, that's a bit vague, but I'll, I'll give you this question. I said, what is the most important thing in your life? The highest thing on your value that your life demonstrates? She says, my daughter. I said, you have, that's really how you, you spend a lot of time with her. You spend a lot of energy on that. That's, yeah. And second is your business. Yeah. My, my, my baby is, my baby, who's actually 19, is my, my special one. And then I've got my business. I said, right now, if I took your 19-year-old daughter and took her away, and I was the mafia, and I took her away, and I said, I ransomed you. The only way you can get your daughter back is you double your business and you got 30 days or your daughter's going to be never seen again. And she, I, I, I did an Al Pacino act. I, I mean, I put on an act that she actually didn't know if I was serious or not. And I convinced her this was serious. And it just so happened their daughter was coming to pick her up and doctor, the, the daughter walked in at that moment and she started walking over to where her mom was. And I, I, she didn't know what I was doing. And I said, if you would come with me, I started to take her daughter away just for the fun of it. And then, because I'm, you know, a little bit, I guess I'm a repressed actor or something. So anyway, this lady said, if I actually had my daughter taken away and the only way I would get her to be able to double my business and I would not see her. And if I didn't get it doubled in the next 30 days, I would never see her again. I said, what just popped through your head when you, when I put you through that scenario? And she saw like five different answers in her head that came to a solution of what she could do. I said, whatever those are, go do that now. She goes, wow, that was cool. So when you have a big enough reason for doing it, you won't stop. Imagine your child is the only way you're going to save your child is to go double your business. You'll do it. When the why is big enough, the house take care of themselves. That's why you don't want to waste your time on objectives or goals that aren't highest on your value and true objectives. You want to make sure that it's real goals and objectives that are truly meaningful to you, that inspire you because in your highest values, you're intrinsically driven. And that's where the most creativity comes. So that's the key to overcome that inertia and to break it down and start the action steps. But you just start, what are the highest priority action steps? Or what is the number one action step I can do today to move one step closer? I have a program called Master Planning for Life that I also present. And in there's 2,000 questions 
on how to ask that to create a business plan, to create a financial plan, to create a relationship plan, to create a social leadership plan, a physical health and well-being plan, a spiritual plan, a family dynamic plan. Because if you don't plan, other people plan. If you don't, you know, if you don't fill your day with high priority actions, it's probably it fills up with low priority distractions and don't. If you don't spend your money on asset accumulation, it's going to end up with unexpected bills. There's a law there that you can't avoid. Neg entropy has to be in place or otherwise you're going to have entropy. And so if you don't plan your life out and don't take command and sit down and ask those questions and write those answers down and get clear in your mind, then you got nothing to, to look at except yourself in the mirror why things aren't happening the way you want. You're not even defining it. So nobody's going to get up in the morning and dedicate your life to your fulfillment. They're going to project their values onto you and expect you to live in their fulfillment around you, even your parents. Nobody's committed to your fulfillment except you. And if you're not taking command of it, you know, in the breakthrough experience, I talk about the love list. That's the beginning of the master plan. If you're not taking command of that, everybody else is going to take care of it. Any area of your life you don't empower, somebody's going to overpower you. And they're going to project and inject values and confuse you. And You want a clear mind? You want an inspired life? Sit down and ask the questions. What is the highest priority action I can do today to move me one step closer in the goal that I have to serve human beings? If you do, you're on your way. And then how can I do it in a sustainable, fair exchange manner where I'm remunerated for it in such a way that I can delegate to others and liberate myself to do the highest priority things? Because when you do the highest priority things, you're going to produce the most. You're going to have the most meaning. You're going to have the biggest business growth.